Well, I may have been away last week, but this week, I'm back! This is Custom Works! Okay then, so this week what we're going to be doing, we're going to be having a bit of a look at the 60s truck and we'll be seeing how that's getting on, a bit of a quick update and we're getting into details now, you know like the main shape's done, we're just like dialing all that stuff in. Also, we're going to be looking at the great show, the Hot Rod and Modified Nationals and I did a bit of filming there. Not as much film as I thought I was going to do, but it was it was quite, quite the weekend. Okay, so let's have a look at the 60s truck, then let's get to that show. Let's do it. The 60s truck, wow, we're really cracking on at the minute. Like, I've got all my backlog of work out of the way and I can fully concentrate each day. Wake up, 60s truck, how long? All day, the next day, yeah, the same. So things are really moving. So what have I done this week? Well, I've been looking at the front end of the truck and just getting everything really dialed in. As you can see here, I've got some fill on here because I've got this mast up, ready just to get that panel gap just dead right around there, filled all the way down to this steel reinforcement, this skid pan just here. This is gonna have a trim across it, I think, because this will definitely crack away from that. So I think a nice trim around there, nice chrome trim with a chrome bumper is gonna look awesome. So if you remember the other week, we plasmaed this off, but now it's all cut me, that's nice and strong. And uh, you know, that is really moving towards like being something that might get a bit of primer. Also, been doing a lot of work on this now. It's screwed into place at the minute, but the whole back of this is sealed now. There's nothing scruffy. And we've even got the rebate that the glass is gonna fit to on there. I've even made a template for that, so that is literally ready to rock. And a lot gone on with this, you know, smoothing the inside of this out was quite a bit of body work. Even for me, then like I do a lot of body work. <laughs> I seem to be immune to the boredom of body work, but that was, um, that was a lot of hand sanding. No one likes that. Anyway, let's have a look at what we've done in the engine bay. I'd already done this curve to make this curve a nicer radius. And now I've also radiused the back bits here as well. Just so this is all rounded. And when this opens up, it looks nice. I've tidied the two hinges up as well. I made this panel front here, welded either end. Made some um, die bond covers for the end. So... That looks a lot nicer now, and it really works well. What I'm doing at the minute, I'm just making these trims for around the holes that the hinge moves through. And then in here now, what this has made me, is this has made me a clean edge to work from. So just here is my clean edge, and from there in, this is gonna all be engine cover. Because one thing, when Richie first came to me with it about this car, we were chatting and he said, I really want to use it, I need to move my motorbike around, but I want to look cool doing it, I want that Ed Roth style. And he said, he wanted, and this is, this is just absolute common sense, keep the taxi engine. Taxi engine is not the fastest, not by a long way, but it will go forever. Car always starts, car always works. And I don't know, to me, that's, that's one of the most important things. No point having a big engine if it never runs or the battery's always flat. This. First turn the key, it's always going to work. But Richard was like, I want the full show car experience. And he'd seen the engine. Well, I've done a few fake engines. He'd seen a few of my fake engine embellishments and said, could you do that on the taxi? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a full show car engine here. And then, of course, we've got the window just here. And you'll be able to see that through there. But then when the bonnet electronically opens, you can see the whole majesty of what will go on in here of course it'll all be nonsense but it will look really good and i was thinking you know fake engine fake supercharger unless you're going to race it every supercharger is sort of fake really so no one needs that much power no one needs well a really big polished engine all you need the filthy old diesel lump that's going to drag the car around every day and then put a bit of show on top to make it look cool. So the back of the bonnet is all nice and smooth. I've still got this to cut out. And then with this, this is on the glass panel, I've got to work out 
how I'm going to actually fit the glass in it. So at first, I was thinking of having the rebate in and the glass in, but Hot Rod Legend Lee Cox has pointed out to me, that if I have any dip, it's just going to fill with water. He's got an old Dodge truck, and that's got things in the... Um, in the bonnet like that and the bonnet on that fills with water and it's always green in the corners so I really want to do that so I've got to work a way of getting this so it comes up the glass is flush and back across so I'll be working on that making that good also and you're not going to really see it on camera but this whole side of the car has been like has been blocked and stuff I've not gone the full way because we need the bracing like the sort of semi roll cage you're going to put in to brace these door gaps because as the car dances, they do move a little bit. So once that's done, again, this section here is getting close to being ready for primer. Right, and so one thing we've got to do, now I've underboarded the, uh, the, the bonnet to make it all smooth underneath, um, I need to recut this hole. So let's get on, let's get that done. rebate which I planned on putting the glass in but like I've said I need to make this flush so I'm gonna get rid of that rebate I'm gonna reline this and so that when you look through you know the bonnet looks like it's thick yeah, well it is made of fiberglass and a lot of filler but I mean thicker than thick like a quality thickness so I'm gonna cut that out and then cloak in here make all this nice ready for that top bit that somehow is gonna hold the glass they don't know how. But anyway, it'll come to me. Let's just cut this out. So the hole in the bonnet is looking a lot better. I've like lined it out in aluminium. I've just put this round, might have fixed it into position. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fill this and then I'm gonna start making the bit that sits on here. And what I'm gonna make is gonna be very similar to the way that I did, <laughs> very similar, i.e. exactly the same, but on a bonnet, not on the side of the car. But in the way I did that, I'm gonna glass to this, then take that bit off. And that will give me my, the bit that holds the glass in there but then when you see through the glass you only see nice hair and also when you look through from here but well, I know there's a lot of detritus and stuff but this is my clean bottom edge so you'll just see that in white and then this will be the fake engine cover and from the other side looks even better on the underside of the bonnet we can see this looks nice this is all in that hinge with the drill details really looking nice this is all smooth now. It really is coming together to be, you know, a, just a, a great area of the car, which it should be. You know, it's the engine, it's the bonnet, it's the front end. Should look good. What I'm going to do now, and I'd forgotten that, I'm going to put a, thit, a bit around here. I'm going to put a frame around there, maybe some rivet detail, just so that that looks really nice when the bonnet's up and you're admiring the <coughs> fake engine. I think if I just sand up this bit of filler, make a template for that, now I can get that on, and then we can start looking at that top bit that's gonna hold the glass in the in the bonnet with the bonnet window. Things these cars have. Who has a window in the bonnet? No one. Except for this car. Right, so the bonnet window is looking pretty good. I've done the edge on the interior all the way around, done the back. So all I have to do now is to find the glass around it and make piece of fiberglass that fits this perfectly. I have had to bodywork this a bit. There was a bit of a dip up there, but I think I've got it out and I think my fiberglass is going to fit nice. So 
get some fiberglass stuck on there, wet it out, get this perfect mould off of this, and then I'll get that on the bench and I'll start making the rebate for the glass to sit in on the top just here. Because don't forget, it can't sit in the rebate, it's got to sit like flush so the water don't get in, or it don't puddle. Like a what year truck? Dodge D100, 1972. 1972 Dodge D100, literally the worst bonnet ever designed if it's going to rain because it does pull. But yeah, from that, from that Dodge, we realised this cannot pull because it's a pain on the Dodge. Got one of them Dodges, you will know the pain. I've trimmed it and I've fiberglassed it, uh, smoothed it all out. This filler maybe just needs a little bit more, but probably after a coat of primer. And we can see now that we've got, we've got this really shallow little rebate in there. And that is what the glass is going to sit in and then have a nice beveled edge and it's going to look absolutely amazing. So, here it is. Does it still fit the car well though? So, back at the bonnet. It fits really good. That's great. Just fits on there. It'll put, it'll be bonded on when it's finished and when the car's painted. This will be gold. This will be white. That's worked out pretty good. And you know we're gonna through that glass is gonna be an absolute you know symphony of cool stuff. We'll probably have like the inlets down here, stuff like that. A lot of chrome, a lot of gold. Just you know crazy custom engine. That won't be real. It's just a diesel underneath. But that doesn't matter. It's just, it's custom, so it's just all about the look, you know what I mean? But yeah, that's come out really nice, and I look forward to the next step, which for that, would probably be primer. And now, let's have a quick look under the bonnet. I have to take this off, because of course it's not fixed down yet. Under the bonnet now, we've got this cool sort of backing to the window in the bonnet, which, um, you know, it's got that sort of porthole vibe to it. But yeah, it's all looking a lot tidier under there. You know, this opens on an actuator. And this will go open up and you'll see the engine. The underside of the bonnet's got to look pretty good. So yeah, that is looking nice. And things are moving on. And now let's take a look at that three minute show review. <laughs> Okay, so we were at the Hot Rod Nationals in Lincolnshire and we're taking a look at this 1937 Chevy truck. This thing is absolutely just off the scale, unbelievably cool. Like so many body, body mods, capillary chop, all that back sort of rake forwards giving it its awesome stance. And then in the pickup bed, wow, it's just unbelievable. This thing really is the absolute top of the tree of like British customising like just the work that's gone into this everything is perfect every single like brake line and everything is just unbelievable off the scale you know this is like a sort of Riddler level car unreal
Another car at the show which is absolutely awesome is this 1939 standard flying nine. I think I've got all my nines wrong there. It's actually 1934 standard flying nine. This thing is just off the scale. Maserati engine, almost like I reckon like unmodified body as well, it's straight as a die. And then it's got like low profile tyres on big, big spoke rims. It's just it's just insane and apparently this is like a 10 year old build that was built 10 years ago and then stored away and then it's just been cleaned up finished off and bought out seems like a, a brand new car it's absolutely like that like the cutting edge of like hot rod style just so cool but with the modern maserati engine just amazing absolutely love it another amazing car at the show brian winfield phantom this thing is just unreal like this is a race car but it's finished like a show car the finish on it is just yeah. unreal. The paint is just amazing. Every single detail on this car is just so clean, so nice. And yeah, he's gonna race it next season. So it's just gonna be just the craziest thing to get this level of finish on a, uh, on a race car though. Just amazing, really is fantastic. Um, Brian, big hero of mine. I will never be able to paint like him. <laughs> Another great car at the show, and this has been around for a few years now, but it's still looking great, still really fresh car. And this is a 1954 Plymouth Belvedere. Because like, you look at this and you think, there's a Plymouth Belvedere. <laughs> what? Absolutely amazing car. Um, to slam down, you know, wheel fitment, everything on this car is just spot on. Really is. Just amazing piece of work. And such a weird car to do it with, you know, like, you don't see too many Plymouth Velvetes anywhere. Another amazing car here is this Nova. This is just, this car is just a, a, you know, like a, it's like an exercise in style and restraint. You know, we look at this fitment on these back wheels, like the paint is flawless on this thing, really is. And the interior as well, just matches so well with the style of the car. I think I think this is when um, when companies release old cars again. This is what you hope they're going to be like. It's just like it's the old Nova, but it's just been that made that little bit more modern. Absolutely, so well detailed everywhere. Really is one of the stars of the show. Okay then, so that is about it for this week. We'll be back next week. Loads of 60s truck stuff. The amount that's going on on the 60s truck at the minute, it's, it's just an exciting project. Every day it's evolving. So more of that next week. Don't forget, click, subscribe, like, share, all of those things, do those. And also, big shout out to Craig Austin and family 
And also, Nick Sutherington, who I saw you, you were wearing one of my t-shirts. Got my eyes out. Oh, yeah. Right, and so that's it. See you all next week. I thank you very much. And good night.